Well, hello, folks, and welcome to Sproggy Wood. This is a cute roguelike game. I almost wanted to give it another designation. But it is made by the Caves of Cud team. I very rarely say this, but please, if you like roguelikes, go support this game. It just recently actually was released on Steam, got green light approval. It's in the new release section as of probably the day this video is released. I'll have links to the description. But I love the team that made this game. Caves of Cud is one of my favorite roguelikes of all time. Um, it hasn't been updated in quite some time because they went to focus on this game. Most likely, A, in order to hone their skills a little bit better, kind of diversify some things, and B, get a stream of revenue coming in, I imagine. I have no idea. I'm just guessing. But Caves of Cut is not exactly a um, mass marketable game with huge appeal. It is very in-depth, quite complicated, pretty much the complete opposite of this game. I almost want to say this is Baby's first roguelike. Um, we'll go ahead and just start a new game here. We'll do normal difficulty. I've only played this a little bit. There once was an island called Clog, where clogheads chased sheep through the fog. They laughed on the double and never made trouble until they met Sproggy of Sprog. The talking sheep. Look, over here, a cloghead sleeps. Hmm, so I see. Anyway, my work here is done. The rest is up to you. Thank you, Rocco. By the power you've granted me, I will save my realm. If you say so. Look, the cloghead awakens. Bah, I'm a sheep. Away, away, before it sees you. Hmm. Hey, you, with the pitchfork. Yes, you, cloghead. Are you surprised to meet a talking sheep? Bah. Why don't you take a closer look? So, you can examine things by clicking on this, obviously, and then clicking on them. It's a sheep and it's talking. I told you. Now, follow me. I want to show you something marvelous. Okay. You control the game using the number pad. Oh no, a yellow jelly. It's going to eat us. I don't think so. Space bar apparently goes through the text, so you don't have to just use your mouse. We are doomed. It's hopeless, Cloghead. Let us lie down and accept our fates. I refuse. You are brave, Cloghead. You saved us from that deadly, adorable jelly. Oh no. Yikes, another jelly. This one is twice as big, and twice as cute, and twice as delicious. And we level up. So when you level up, you can choose from certain powers to upgrade. Don't really know what any of these powers do specifically. Z, X, and C are the shortcut keys. Hmm. I'm guessing these are the extra. These are the levels, and what they will do. Pumpkin bombs. I'm pretty sure you have to actually find. No, we'll go for a scarecrow. Cloghead, you look wiser now. It's as if you learned something from the experience fighting those jellies. I'm going to get my sheep bah, down by the end of all this. Take a look at your new power. Okay, so I can actually examine that. Scare enemies away for three turns. Scare away for five turns. Blah, blah, blah. Powers cost stamina. And it looks like killing those jellies gave us stamina stars. So that is stamina. I kind of thought that that was experience. Oh no, what is that? Don't touch it. On second thought, do touch it. Yeehaw. So, uh, uh, there's no inventory in this game, I'm pretty sure. There's no, like, massive inventory screen with a A through Z that you have to sort through. You either keep the old one or use the new one. This shoots a pillar of flame that deals four to six damage. Hoghead, take a look at your weapon. So, we have a flaming shovel. And right now we're wearing a simple pair of dungarees. How mighty you are to behold, Cloghead. A true adventurer. The adventurer. Wait, Cloghead. If you walk up to that jelly, it'll bite you. Can you outsmart it? If you wait a turn, it'll come to you. So click the hourglass or press space or press the number five on your keypad. There's no diagonal attacks, and we're lucky that we didn't catch the sheep on fire there and kill it. Yes, you outsmarted a jelly cube. And you taught it a deadly lesson for being so adorable. 
Now those pools of jelly that I just walked through, they do actually have an effect. You slip. Look, this is what I want to show you. A mysterious door. Let's enter it heedlessly. That would probably get annoying if I kept doing it, though. Look, Cloghead. We were transported to a wonderful place. The rivers are so blue. The forests are so green. But I must confess something. I... I fooled you. I'm no sheep. No sheep at all. Hark, mortal! I am Sproggy, dark lord of this realm. Begin your life anew as my thrall, for I am your master now. You will spend the remainder of your days in my realm, Sprog, toiling as I see fit. Now, let us visit the meager peasant village where you will live. Okay, why not? So you don't succumb to feelings of despair. I built this quaint farm and a cute little cottage for you. Lovely, aren't they? Now, my thrall, it is time to test your mettle. It's time to put you to work. Oh, really? Do I get paid for this work? Varrier, shut your mouth for your first task. You must quell the uprising of a troublesome jelly lord. His name is Big Ick, and he lives at the bottom of a cave called Ikikolo. Big Ick fancies himself something of a social philosopher. Lately, he's been stirring up dissent among the jellies, preaching jelly rights and all this other nonsense, trying to convince them to organize into solid forms. I will not have it. You must go to Ikikolo and put Big Ick in his place. Go to Ikikolo and put Big Ick in his place. Okay, settings. There is music, uh, because I sat on the title screen so long before... Um, Recording apparently it has stopped. It'll probably start whenever we get back into a dungeon. Go to Icky Colo and put Big Ick in his place. There's shops, storage, decorations you can do. We're not going to worry about any of that for now. We're just going to go straight to Icky Colo. Various rewards. Beat Icky Colo with different classes. Right now, all we have is the farmer class. It is time to do my bidding, Clawhead. Remember what you learned about defending yourself when I wore that ridiculous sheep costume. Now go. Yeah, we don't have any gear to choose from. Outside Ikikolo. Okay. Apparently there is no music. I'm going to have to add some. And hey, we found a vampiric pitchfork. Heals one hit point whenever an enemy dies. It's better than the one I've got, so... Let's take it. And once you loot an item on the world... Or in the maps here, you can actually buy it in town at the shops. But you have to find it out in the field first. So, um, I don't think I have any of these unlocked yet because that was just a tutorial that we went through earlier. So I'll just actually go pumpkin bomb. Why not? Uh, always use choke points. If there's one thing I've learned about roguelikes, or any game really, is that choke points are always your friend. And yeah, see? That little slippery thing there? If you step over... You can, if you step over it, you can really uh, get yourself into a pickle because you won't be able to get back into your little safe spot easy. Like if you're here, nope, you're not getting back up there. Oh no, we're webbed. At this point, there's really no reason not to set around and wait to get the perfect hit. Oh, that was bad. Just make sure you're not waiting when you don't have to wait. That little thing over there will continue to pump out spiders. I'm not sure how long we can farm it. That requires level 4. We will hurl. We'll get a pitchfork we can hurl. Um, let's see. Takes one star. How do I... How do I use it? Oh, there we go. Yeah, I think you could just sit here and farm these things, but I, I'm not sure that the spiders actually give us any real experience. Now I don't see my experience bar moving up there. Oh well. They don't drop items either. An invisibility potion is now available. I wonder how useful that actually is. Pretty sure you can also only carry one potion at a time in your inventory. So... You don't want to hoard them too long. Whoops. Get a little bit 
carried away with my waiting every now and then. This is kind of a small little area. It's mapped out up top there. So let's go down Ikikolo. You'll notice there's no way back up. We've fallen into a hole. Yeah, I was going to take a hit there. I could have stepped back for a second and killed the slime, but whatever. Ah, bastard, I didn't even see you there. Come here, slime. <sighs> I do wish that this game had diagonal attacking. That was one of my pet peeves for some reason about Dungeons of Dreadmore. I am getting a little bit careless. I have no idea what happens in this game if you die. I've never actually failed before. That? What is that? It's a dark passageway. A wise sage once said, Enter any dark cave you come across. Monsters never hurt anyone. For some reason, I don't believe that. Come here, you cute little slime balls. Slime cubes, actually. Oh boy. There we go. I'm not careful to learn, no matter what I do, I'm going to get myself hit. We're going to map out this entire place. Hmm. We'll examine that here in a second. I'm not entirely sure what that does. What do you do? It's a shrine. A shrine to life itself and the wonder of all living things. It'll probably give me health, but... Actually, I don't, I don't care about examining. But, because I've got this vampiric pitchfork... I'm actually staying at max health. An identity crisis potion. Scrambles all of our powers. Um, we can use it, keep it, to use it at some other point, or sell it for cash. Might as well use it. Oh, wow, what did we unlock here? Magic missile. Shoot arrow and charge. Charge in a direction and hit an enemy. Up to two spaces away. Shoot a missile at the nearest enemy. Kind of think I got screwed here by swapping my powers out. We will upgrade charge. That seems like it might be a little bit more useful. And hey, Stormguard dungarees. 10 extra hit points, and whenever you are attacked, 40% chance to shoot 4 bolts of lightning that deal 3 to 4 damage. Damn yeah, right, I'm going to choose that. Summons monsters to fight for you. Scroll of Summoning. Let's keep it. You can see that that got rid of my potion of invisibility. Which is why I've said it's not exactly a bad thing to use your items. From the few tests I did a couple weeks ago before this thing was uh, actually released, whenever I got to have a little sneak preview of it, items are fairly plentiful. Maybe a little spider nest. Yeehaw. Okay. This hole, I believe... Oh, I didn't actually want to go there. There was one more opening that I missed. No, oh, my 100% completion. There is no 100% completion. Just think of all the treasure. There he is. Don't fall for his persuasive rhetoric. You jibber garble 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 A cute slime block. My question is, what does this do? A cryptic shrine to an inscrutable deity. Okay, our prayers have been answered with the joy of loot. So, yes, yes you can sip potions twice. Nice. Um, yeah. We're just gonna set here. Charge. And we silence it. Eep! We silenced the opposition, apparently. Hmm. I will loot that big chest here in a second. I'm pretty sure if you, once you loot the massive chests, you get kicked out of the dungeon. I need to smash and thrash everything, which that is everything. So what do you got for me? A portal, that's it? I was kind of hoping for a little bit of loot. Hey, a new villager's joined our town. Another villager. Silence the easy opposition. Blah, blah, blah. So, whenever you defeat monsters, apparently they join your village. That's kind of cool. Didn't have... I say this didn't... This didn't have a, a bunch of the features 
Whenever I tested it just a few weeks ago, they have already polished it a lot. You did it! Excellent work, Cloghead! So, quest complete. Go to Ikikolo and put Big Ick in his place. What's that? Something about a mushroom? Silence! We will get to that in a moment. First, let us examine the spoils you, un you recovered from Big Ick's lair. Okay, this is where we get our loot. Choose one. We can either get a forge for the village, which will give us access to a warrior, or a wood mill, which will give us access to the archer. I am kind of partial to a warrior right now, so let's build that. Yes, Cloghead! Your simple, dull civilization is expanding. Now you can send warriors on adventures, and each time you beat an old dungeon with a new class, you'll loot 1,000 more gold. Now tell me about this mushroom. It popped out of Big Ick? A new species in Sproggy Wood? Oh, <laughs> yippee yay yo uh, uh, uh. I mean, rejoice! Another creature for me to subjugate to my evil dark machinations. Oh, who am I kidding? I'm no dark lord. Uh, I'm just Sproggy, a little guardian spirit who wants to save his realm from ruin. I'm sorry about all those terrible things I said to you. You see, let, let me explain. This is Sprog. It's my realm. Well, it's, uh, not mine technically. I, I didn't create it. But I am its guardian spirit. Anyway, Sprog is populated with some wonderful creatures. But there's no order. No community. With enough time, the denizens of Sprog will ravish each other and leave nothing but destruction and chaos in their wake. How can I be certain of this, you ask? You must trust me, Cloghead, for I know things most spirits do not. And that's where you come in. You see, I've been spying on, uh, um, well, I've been admiring your people for some time. The Clogheads value peace, order, and civility, and you thrive accordingly. And so it hit me. The answer to Sprog's problems is civilization. You can bring civilization to Sprog. So you see, Cloghead, this is why I kidnapped, uh, well, guided you to Sprog. Now I'm going to go investigate this curious mushroom. In the meantime, meet Spencer Squish. I relocated him here from Ikikolo so that he could help you around your village. Spencer, go ahead and explain how Clogheads should spend their gold. I'll be back with news about that mushroom. Hmm. With all that shiny gold you want, fair and square, you can buy things in town. Oh, really? I'm more curious about what these guys have to say. You can buy civic boosts to improve your civilization. Or gear that you find in dungeons. You may have noticed that dungeon gear dematerializes when you leave a dungeon through a portal. Traveling through the astral plane has its costs. But, once you buy gear at the shop, you keep it for good. That's good to know. Dang it. A lot of the things I found are too expensive for me to buy. You can also buy potions and scrolls you find in dungeons. Once you buy a potion or scroll, you can take it with you every time you go adventuring. Do I have to pay for it every time? And that is that. Bye! So, buy civic boosts. We get experience 20, 40, 60, 80, 100% faster, blah, blah, blah. The Apothecary Fund, Merchant Quarter, items cost a little bit less, Clergy's Coffers, find more special vases, there was one in here whenever I was testing it that was like more chests, that is what I would want. I think the first upgrade I'll buy here is, how about Pottery School, this will pay off in the long run, hopefully, by getting it early. And, hmm, heal one hit point whenever an enemy dies, or a flaming shovel. Shoots a pillar of flame that does four to six damage. I would much rather heal, so we're gonna buy this. There we go. Now I'm really too broke to buy anything else. What do you have to say? Slurp, slurp, you bastard. There's my warrior. Sheep don't have anything to say. Decoration. So I can rearrange things. 
grass one, grass two, grass three. Mm. Stone path. Eek. It's not exactly what I wanted to do yet, so the I can't actually go back. There we go. Once we get a little bit more of the town decorated, we'll come in here and actually place things. It's got bridges. Just, um, let's move that because I did not want to place it there. <sighs> no. This is not working. bitch right there okay close enough got farms fields ends a trader pretty sure I already have a trader somewhere around here maybe not rearrange stuff okay now for quests we don't really have any cloghead you're just in time I have news regarding the mushroom you discovered it seems the little bugger has been spawning all over the place Mushrooms are appearing in Ikikolo and Goat Turku. What's Goat Turku, you ask? Why, it's another of Sprague's fabulous dungeons and home to the goat folk. The goat folk can be quite ordinary, you see, especially their tribe mother, the Goatress. This is what concerns me. She might not take kindly to finding these little mushrooms in her warren. You must go to Goat Turku and deliver this message. Be nice to the mushrooms. Deliver it by any means necessary. Good luck and beware the goats. So we have to forcefully deliver a message of kindness to the goatress. Um, however, I'm not quite ready to do that. Let us go back to Ikikolo, except we're gonna go there with the warrior. Don't have any equipment for him. A sword, not very long, mail, a suit of heavy mail armor, no consumables. Let's just go see what we can find here. Oh yeah. Come here, slime bastards. Everything in this forest is not going to be a challenge at all. We've got cleave, charge, and shield wall. Ignore all damage for three turns. That takes three whopping stamina, though. Yeah. Attack each enemy around you. That actually wouldn't be too bad. We'll get that. Just in case I ever happen to get cornered, that was bad. See, I get a little bit... What are you? Oh, wow. Okay, I was going to say I thought that I'd be able to take everything here on in one hit. I might actually die on this character. But that guy just... Mm. I'm scared of these things now. How do I... No! No, we died! Looted, blah, blah, blah. Try again. So there's no permadeath. Oh, that's not too bad. Um, well... Hello there. Mushrooms. I thought I was supposed to be nice to the mushrooms. Isn't that what he told me? Let's get shield wall instead, so... Whenever I get low on health, I can use it. That seems like a better investment. Stupid spiders. Wasting my time. I think the only thing they give me that's worth a damn is stamina. And maybe a little bit of gold. Slip sliding away. So there's the way down. I'm not going to rush through this. Hey, a shrine. Come here, you big icky slime. Yeah, and you can see monsters will get caught up in the webs. Slimes can pass through those slime pools without slipping, but anything else. have to waste a turn. There we go. And finally, some music. Um, what is this? Your prayers are answered with the wintry tides. I guess that would have killed any monsters that were on the screen. I don't know why I just dove headfirst into that attack. That would have been a great shrine to ha have found. Whenever I could have actually used it. And charge in a direction and hit an enemy two spaces away. I'm gonna get cleave. 
charge is kind of interesting. But I dislike the thought of throwing myself. 20% chance to ignore an attack and teleport you to a random space. What could go wrong with that? Stamina potion. I dislike the thought of throwing myself two tiles forward and getting myself in trouble. I make bad decisions all the time anyways with tactics. Blink suit. What could possibly go wrong with it? Okay. Just a couple more rooms to map out here. I think this is it. Anything that leaves? Oh, just a stinking mushroom. I almost feel bad about killing those things. It's like killing your own kind. You guys hiding under all the leaf piles? Doing a little bit better this time. Primarily because, yeah, I was gonna... Well, I didn't have to get attacked there. I could have passed a turn. Instead of diving headfirst into it. Come here, you. Tactics and strategy and messing around with the weight key. Bastard mushroom. Turns you invisible for 50 turns. Let's just use it. Wow, what is that guy? Goat folk. Victims of their goatish goatish nature. Goat folk savages will charge at the opportunity to expel you from their warrens. Yeah, don't really like the look of those guys. I knew that as soon as I attacked I was going to regret it. So, use that. Hmm. Kind of a waste right there. Of my shield skill. Uh, not too hard. A decent chunk of damage, though. That's the bad part. Yes, why can't this music play all the time? Hmm. This is probably where charge could come in handy. Or that skill would be useful. And a dancing sword of flame. She's a gigantic swirl of flames that deals four to six damage. Let's take that. Cleave, no. Return 50% of damage to attackers. Take that. That will be useful. Wow. This is a powerful sword. Okay. Got an answer to that. Yeehaw. Getting rich here. So powerful he can't even... Summons monsters to fight for you. Let's use it. So powerful I didn't even get a chance to spawn little minions. That's right. Sick them. Sploosh. I think that my flame attack damages my friends, too. It's good to pay attention to. Not that I can do anything about it. Come on. Get down here. I'll kill everything from the edge of the screen. Oh boy. Something tells me this is going to be a very expensive sword to pick up. Whenever I actually have to purchase it. You guys don't get caught by the webs, do you? Go figure. That does make sense. Okay. So this boss fight is going to be... Maybe not that bad. Hmm, where is he at? Come on out, big ick. There's not really a whole lot of places you could be hiding. There he is. The prayers are answered with the wonders of pottery. Not exactly what I was hoping for. Use that. Use that. Get a little bit more stamina. I guess I can just keep spamming that attack. Hell, it's extremely, extremely, extremely powerful. 
Class reward a thousand, monsters and loots and other stuff. Question is, what do we get for defeating it? Do I get anything else? Do I get a chest over here to click on no? Apparently you only get loot. Like a, a loot chest for defeating it once. So, how much is 4,000? Sword of Dancing Flames. I knew that was going to be absolutely ridiculous. Okay. Shovel, storm guard, dungarees. Mm -hmm. hmm. I don't know. I'll think about what we're gonna do for the next video. Whenever we return, I may run Ikikolo once or twice again just to do a little bit more farming, and then we're gonna dive into Goat Turku. See what the goat folk have to say about these mushrooms.